Hello everybody, this is a bit of a different type of video. I want to do more deep dives of individual pieces of Lost Media, as my 10 Intriguing Pieces series doesn't always allow me to go as in-depth as I'd like. With this one, I seem to be the only person in the YouTube Lost Media space that seems to be talking about this topic. I gave it a segment in episode 2, naively thinking that it would somehow spark interest, but I think the real reason that didn't happen is that most of the fans of this show don't know about the fact that an entire season of it is lost. I'm here to spread awareness of this search that seems very cold at the moment. So for those that don't know, Late Kick is a college football show started by a man named Josh Pate. Josh Pate started out as a news anchor for WLTZ in Columbus, Georgia. Late Kick stemmed from a contractual agreement between Josh and management of the news station in which Josh would be given three nights a week to produce his own live show from the studio in exchange for lesser pay than he would have gotten. Before Late Kick became a YouTube product, it was a Facebook live show. While pretty much the entire Facebook show is intact, the YouTube version of the show after the transition is gone. Late Kick after the 2019 football season was acquired by 24-7 Sports. The channel that hosts Late Kick now used to be the official 24-7 channel before the Late Kick show outgrew the utility of the 24-7 channel. Thus, the independent episodes from the 2019 season are lost except one clip that's been left on the channel. Then we go to the following season, and I'll never forget, one of the most vivid memories I have of ever covering any game was LSU goes into Auburn, Auburn beats LSU. We're right there in the corner end zone, and it looks like LSU has just hit a walk-off touchdown. They go to the review, time has expired, and boom, all of a sudden you got to see LSU celebrate a big win, and then you got to see Auburn celebrate a big win. Going back on the Wayback Machine, we can see that the channel is much like the new one today, with live shows as well as cut-up clips from the live shows. However, clicking on any of these won't lead to anything, as it doesn't appear that any of the URLs from the individual videos were saved. In an email correspondence from over two years ago, I asked Josh a separate question, but in the same original email I asked about the videos from the original channel. The only response I got was that the channel might be repurposed. Obviously, since two years have passed, that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And that's pretty much it as far as the lost portion of the video goes. But to Late Kick fans who happen to be watching and maybe discovered the show after Josh joined 24-7, I thought I'd talk just a little bit about what the show was like before. First of all, from what I can remember, the audio wasn't as clear, and you could tell the show had a lower budget, but a more local feel to it. Big Ten and Pac-12 teams were seldom talked about, compared to how often they are today, and the games Josh attended would be ones within driving distance of Columbus. The more local feel and smaller audience definitely gave the show a level of charm I wouldn't say it has today, but at the same time, I think the upscale visuals and wider scope of the show is something that makes it better. During the 2019 season was when Josh changed to wearing only white t-shirts on air. To people who have never seen the show, that may not sound like a big deal, but it's a huge deal. The white t-shirt wasn't always Josh's signature thing until the 2019 season. 2019 Late Kick may or may not come back, but regardless, I think from a purely Lost Media perspective, it's something that needs to be talked about more. This doesn't have an article on the Lost Media wiki, and as far as I'm aware, I seem to be one of the only people that's noticed all the videos on the old channel are gone. Or, at least cared about that. The last remaining video has, at last count, two comments that ask where the old videos went, and that's it. It's possible Josh had to remove the videos for contractual reasons with 24-7, but if that's the case, why is there still a video left on the channel? And for that matter, why did he pick that specific video to stay up? A video about Ed Orgeron outsmarting college football that ages worse and worse with every day is still up. Another theory I have is that Josh just wants to move beyond the independent episodes he did. Maybe he resents the management that wouldn't give him a deal at the old news station, and he saw the YouTube channel for Late Kick as a means to an end. And possibly because he saw it as a means to an end, he saw it as largely disposable. But even beyond that, why would Josh start posting on the 24-7 channel only for 24-7 to give him their channel and start a new one? Why couldn't Josh keep his same channel but be on 24-7's payroll? Who knows? Sometimes you have to realize that there's some media out there that's just destined to be lost. Josh mentioned in a podcast that he doesn't know if any footage exists of his newscast with WLTZ. Perhaps Josh just doesn't view lost media the same way lost media enthusiasts do. When you leave the lost media bubble, you find there are people who are just apathetic about media preservation, and don't really care about viewability. I don't really like to speculate on what kind of person he is, but... Maybe, just maybe, Josh is one of those people. 
If anything comes from this, I'll be sure to let you know in a separate video. Thanks for watching, I know this was a bit of a different style than you're used to, but I've gotten some complaints that I don't go in depth enough on the lost media I cover, so if this gains traction, you'll definitely see more videos like it in the future. Have a good one everybody. Oh, and by the way, if this video gets 10,000 views like the other time I talked about Late Kick, Josh, you are legally required to give me a chalice of supremacy. I know you're watching, Josh. Well, I lied apparently, that's not the only footage that's available. Pretty much right after I finished the voice recordings for this video, I was able to find two clips digging deep on Twitter. I won't play both of them right here, but I'll play the shorter of the two that's only 40 seconds long, so you can see the other footage I was able to find, and maybe I'll put the two minute clip that I also found on Twitter somewhere else. But anyway, to play us out, here's the 40 second clip I managed to find right after recording the voice recordings from this video. Selfishly, just up the road at Lynette High School, and this program had not been much for a long while. The coaching staff up there that we're pretty close to took over a little while ago. They've had a lot of success up there. They made several deep uh, Alabama High School Athletic Association, like 17 A's, playoff runs, and we've been right alongside them. So Christian Storey's quarterback there just broke Bo Nix's all-time Alabama high school touchdown record last week, and it happened about, what would you say, about, probably about 15 feet from me. I didn't even measure it in yards. That's how close I was. So congratulations to him. He's an Alabama commit. He'll be uh, playing for Nick Saban this time next year. I think they're on the road in playoff action this Friday night. So.